Hi, so today on Graphic Workers we are going to learn how to edit this image to get an effect like this. So this is an image clicked by a Canon 60D, that's a DSLR camera from Aditya Bhargav's gallery of images. So let's start editing it. So first we'll remove these people because they are not the subject of this image. So let's start with it. As you can see, we can use the environment to remove these people from this picture. So for that, we'll choose the Spot Healing Brush tool. First of all, we can unlock the layer and then I'm just clicking the left mouse button so that Photoshop removes the front of this picture according to the environment that is present nearby the characters. Don't worry if you're not going 100% fine because you can always correct what whatsoever we have done in the image. So as you can see now the spot healing brush tool is not giving a 100% result. So what we can do, we can choose the healing brush tool, click alt and select the area from which where from where we have to copy the environment over the image. So I'll just click Alt and left click the mouse button. So you can see. So as you can see, we are having the railing that we are going to duplicate over the image. I'll make the brush smaller and I'll repeat the process I'll choose the spotty linguist tool again That's it. Now let's edit this part. So uh, as I clicked using Alt, but I was selected on the Spot Healing Brush tool, the Photoshop prompted me to choose the Healing Brush tool. So I choose this shadow layer and I duplicate it over my image. But if I click and drag, I get a better result. Just click and drag. Then at the point of the joint, we can just choose the spotty linguist tool and click once. So we've got a perfect railing. Now let's just remove these legs. I'm using the spotty linguist tool and clicking and dragging over the image, over the area that I want to move away. Since the content aware type was selected, Photoshop automatically adjusts, adjusts the environment and uses the environment to manipulate the image. So we've got a clean plate over here. Let's remove this lady also. I have selected the spot in brush tool. I'm clicking and dragging. It's just this simple to remove people and unwanted subjects from your image. I've chosen the healing brush tool. I've selected this area and I'm just duplicating it like this. I'll pick the railing and put it over here. I choose this part of the railing and put it over here. That's it. So you can see there are some circles left over here that we can correct using the spotting in this tool. Be sure that you have selected the content of a type from here because it is very useful to be eliminating objects from the picture. So we've removed one part of the people group. 
So this part is going to take some time, but I'm sure if you are practicing good and if you are using the these two tools regularly, then you can remove this easily. As you can see, I have done it before till this much part. We've got a clean picture right now, and now you can see the subject is very good but the background is plain I don't have any clouds I don't have any color tone in the background it's so flat and it's just not what anybody would be wanting so first of all we'll color correct the foreground for that I've used the curves tool you can see a detailed tutorial of curves in my channel I put the link in the description below also so here you can see that I have taken the mid tones a little bit downwards so that I could get a good good depth you can see that so here we get a depth in the picture I'll just minimize this then I have chosen this image let me first of all make it surpassive represent. So this is the image that I am going to use for the background clouds. So here I am going to use this image. First of all I created a mask so that it's just behind the background. So for creating a mask all I did was just select the picture, click this mask button I add vector mask, I added a vector mask that creates a layer like this and just paint black where you, wherever you don't need the image. So for example, if I paint black over here, you can see the image is going and the flat background is revealing. So I created this mask, this mask looks something like this. I've taken the taken all the foreground part to be black and I've left a little bit of whiter part in in the foreground in a form of a gradient so that you can have both the images the foreground and the background. So to watch this view all you need to do is click left mouse button pressing the alt key down and you can turn on and turn off this view like this and similarly just like the way I have created the mask over here I, I, you can see the foreground has gotten a real, really bit dull over here so for that what I have done is I have chosen to create a mask on the curves tool also so I select the curves tool I create an add vector mask and I have painted black the foreground of my tone over here so I have created a mask like this so that my foreground remains in a brighter position but you can see the clouds are really dark because of the curves that I have used over it the curves are necessary to get a depth and a contrast but you can see uh, this is not a result that anybody would be wanting so for that I have just selected the layer I have decreased its, its opacity to 35% so that it goes with the scene. All you need to do is to create an image that goes with the scene because you don't want the clouds to be looking fake. So I have created this image and I have turned down its opacity to 35% and then I have taken its multiplying mode to hard light so that the highlights gets enhanced. So far we've got this much far and then as you can see editing an image that's with a low exposure gets grains in the image like this. So for that all you need to do is create a smart filter. So for that I have created a layer of whatever we have edited till now. So to create a layer like that all you need to do is 
go to the top layer of your editing and then press control shift and e this creates a layer of whatever you have done below the layer that you have selected including the layer that you have selected but this is not what we want because this way we have merged the editing that we have done below so i'll press control alt z selecting the last layer that i have edited i'll press control alt shift and e by this we duplicate all the layers below and merge them so here i've got the layer i'll convert it into a smart object converting it into a smart object gives me the benefit that whatever layer i use to edit over this image it gets a filter that's all away from the image original image so that i can come in at any point of time in future then i can just turn on and turn off the filters so this is the layer that we've got and i've used the smart filter to get a surface blur over the image so as you can see it just blurs the area of the image so that it could get a fine picture quality i mean getting rid of grains in photoshop is quite difficult so i use surface blur as a smart filter over the image so that i can get rid of the grains you can see the grains getting removed using this filter okay so you can see till now we have edited from this to this i'll just duplicate this group i'll convert it into a smart object now i'm going to use the filter that says adaptive wide angle so this is a filter that you can use to correct the distortions in your image and you can use it for creating the distortions in your image for example a wide angle lens in a camera creates a distorted image that gives a feeling of a wide look captured using the camera but a normal lens could not provide you such results so for that you can use this adaptive wide angle filter so from the corrections drop down menu i'm going to use the fisheye type fisheye is a type of lens that creates a distorted images so i'm going to use focal length of 12 mm as you can see the picture is going far away from you and capturing more area of the scene and i'll try creating more of a curved look so that the image looks more dramatic here i can go with this and i'll click okay photoshop takes time to use such filters because it, it it's working on high resolution images and rendering the image that you've chosen to work on so as you can see using this adaptive filter i've gone from this to this but you can see that i've got this blank area around my original image so to get rid of that i'll first of all make it a center line then i'll choose the crop tool i'll shift alt press the crop tool and resize it smaller so that i can resize it globally from all the directions and i'll choose just the area that i want to use in the image like this i can probably use the above part much more and i'll press okay see photoshop is rendering smart filters according to the resolution of the image 
higher the resolution, the higher the rendering time. So here we've got a picture with a good bulge in the pictures. It gives a look like we've used the fish eye lens and this is how you get a result from this to this. Thanks for watching the tutorial and don't forget to comment if you have any queries or you want a specific tutorial to be created. Subscribe for the channel, subscribe the channel, the graphic workers channel and like the video if you liked it. Thanks for watching.